Scepter, or Scepter Linux. It's a Debian-based, privacy-focused distro that uses KDE instead of GNOME or another Linux desktop. It's difficult to look at a privacy-focused distro like this without comparing it to Tails, and I guess you could say that it's like a KDE version of Tails, but in a lot of ways, Scepter is kind of its own thing. According to the website and the changelog, it's been around for a while, and it was another distro that was requested by you guys, so let's dive in. Once again, like the last video, we're going to be looking at it through a VM. In this case, it's GNOME Boxes, because the distro delves PC is packed and I'm not getting it out. And even though there's a template in GNOME Boxes for Debian testing, it won't do the cool auto-install thing. So we're going to look at the live session first, and then we're going to install it and see what an installed Scepter Linux looks like. Just like any other Linux distro with a live session, you can get to it through the boot prom. In the live session, we see a seemingly basic KDE desktop. It looks like they've made a few customizations to it, namely there's no desktop icons, the workspace switcher is on the bottom, and there is an odd little weather widget, which seems odd for a privacy-focused distro because if you were to put your location in there, you'd be giving away, well, your location. It's a cool looking widget though, but the configuration is kind of a mess. The live session seems a little bit heavy with just under a gigabyte of memory in use, but it is a live session and everything here is just being stored in memory since it's not using any disk stuff. I think that we've only looked at two, maybe three live sessions on the show at this point, so I'm not really keeping track of what's heavy and what's light. Maybe this is normal. So the primary use case for something like Scepter, especially in a live session, is to protect your privacy. There's a few different ways that just running Scepter in a live session does that, but one of them is using a privacy-focused web browser such as Tor. Now Tor isn't just privacy-focused, it also has its own type of routing. It's kind of like a VPN. I don't really want to get into Tor because there are other people and other channels that know way more about this stuff than I do. But there's a few different Tor-related tools here, so we're going to go ahead and look at them. The problem that I had was that it couldn't connect to the Tor network, like, at all. And eventually it ended up completely locking up the live session. I tried connecting to it through the Tor browser, and there's another tool called OnionShare, which also uses the Tor network, and it couldn't connect to it either. It got stuck at loading relay descriptors. This could have just been a transient thing, like bad timing when I'm looking at the distro and Tor is having some kind of problem or whatever, but either way, it's not a super good look. So let's move on from Tor and look at another application that is privacy focused, that being Veracrypt. And Veracrypt here is basically a front end for some really, really cool encryption tools that allow you to create and mount and wipe encrypted volumes. You can create and encrypt a single file that acts like a container that you mount, or you can encrypt an entire device like a USB or something like that. The GUI is particularly user-friendly and it's cross-platform. It acts as a wizard and walks you through the entire process of creating an encrypted or even hidden volume, setting the encryption properties and creating the keys and everything. It's a really, really cool tool. And I'm not that surprised that Scepter ships with it. Keep in mind that we're still in a live session and anything that we create here, including this encrypted file, will be destroyed once we shut down. So Scepter pre-installs Tor, but Tor comes with Debian. You can install it on any Debian-based distro. So I was curious what Scepter actually ships with in terms of what they provide in their repo, if they have a repo, and it turns out they do. They package and ship a bunch of uh, kind of random stuff. We've got an ISO image writer, uh, themes from Sparky Linux, I think Veracrypt is in there, Rosa Image Writer is in there, and Yandex Disk is in there. I thought that was a particularly odd inclusion. But that's about it for the live session. Let's go ahead and install this thing. The installer that Scepter uses is the plain Jane Debian installer with a Scepter header on the top. I don't know if I've featured the Debian installer too many times on the show, so if you've never seen it before, here it is. It's an old school Linux desktop installer, Pretty much no frills, it's been around forever, and I think when it first came out it was pretty cutting edge because installing Linux was kind of a challenge for a long time. Now with so many Linux distros out there, a lot of them just use Calamares or the ones that are based on Ubuntu use Ubiquity or whatever Ubuntu's installer is now. Admittedly, Debian's installer is a bit rough if you're used to an installer like Calamares. It asks you a whole hell of a lot of questions, 
It does its job though, I didn't have any problems installing it, it's just a very long-winded process. I did notice, however, that there weren't any special prompts for encrypting any of the file storage. I get that this is just the vanilla Debian installer, but they could have slipped in, I don't know, a customized screen that says, hey, this is a privacy-focused distro and you might want to encrypt your home partition or something. I mean, you still can, you just have to be paying attention and know where to click when it pops up, otherwise you can pass right by it and all of your information will be stored in the clear. Overall, the install went pretty fast, and the desktop session looks identical to the live session, which isn't too surprising. I did notice that the weather widget wasn't working, though. Oh, and another thing, if you're familiar with running KDE in a VM, you can't resize the display resolution. At least not easily. If you try to, it will resize briefly and then go back to the original size. That's because there's a process running in the background called KScreen, and I don't really understand its purpose other than to just aggravate me. It's a background process, but not a traditional background process. It's handled by KDE itself, and you have to search for it in the settings. You can turn it off and then disable it permanently, and then, if you're in a VM, you're free to resize the screen as you wish. So this is Scepter 2021.4, it's running KDE 5.20.5. A fresh install takes up about 5.9 gigabytes, that's pretty lightweight. And a fresh desktop session here is using about 750 megabytes with no swap in use. Nice. Now I noticed in the live session that there were a couple applications that weren't localized properly. In fact, they used Russian text in the launcher. But when I open one of them, case syslog was one, it's in English. Except for the actual entry for the application, that's still in Russian. At least I think it's Russian. So yeah, if we want to talk about the desktop, there's not much to say, it's just a traditional KDE desktop. The bottom panel is laid out like Windows 10, so you've got the launcher on the bottom left and you've got the tray and time on the bottom right. I noticed in the launcher that a root version of Dolphin is pinned, I thought that was a little weird. I don't know why you'd want to open Dolphin in root, but what's even weirder is it has a very specific layout. It's got a terminal on the bottom and two, like, columned window things. I wonder if there's actually a reason for this, like maybe I missed something on the website that explains the purpose of these weird nuances. Because this feels very, like, specific to somebody's workflow. In the way of backgrounds, there's really not much. Well, to be fair, there is actually a lot. It's all Debian stuff. There is one Scepter background, and the resolution is, like, not good. The Debian backgrounds look great. There's backgrounds from Debian that I actually haven't seen, so I guess they're like B-sides. There's some backgrounds from Debian 10 in here. But the actual Scepter background, it says that it's the right size, but I don't know, it just looks hazy, like it's badly scaled or something. Now one thing I did like about Scepter that I ended up breaking was the style and theme. It's using an old school KDE theme, but if you notice on the outline of the windows, it's actually green. It seems like a lot of Scepter's theming is either gray or blue, so this green, I don't know, glow on the outside of Windows is kind of interesting looking. Unfortunately, the theme wasn't properly saved, or I could very well be a KDE thing, because when I switched away from the global theme, it broke everything. And even when I set the theme to Oxygen, it still kept everything breeze, so I don't know what's going on there. So in the way of default applications, it's kind of a motley mix of all sorts of stuff. There's a bunch of graphics applications, there's media stuff, there's a full office suite, a whole bunch of system utilities, just a lot of stuff that I wouldn't expect to be packaged along with a privacy-focused distro. And what's more, the install size is still quite small. There's a lot of stuff here, like this is a full comprehensive distro. If you need a distro that respects your privacy, maybe you need to edit some photos or edit some documents or make documents, there's a lot of stuff that you could do, and I guess it is handy to have a distro that has all of this stuff ready. I was able to connect to the Tor network through Onion Share, and later through the Tor browser, so that's good. Scepter ships with this application called Sweeper, which is like a system cleaner, but it's odd that it ships with this instead of the much more well-known Bleachbit. Bleachbit is kind of a beast, it can clean all sorts of stuff, and as you can see in the side-by-side, -side, Sweeper only covers like maybe half of what Bleachbit can touch, so kind of an odd choice. So since I got Tor to connect, we might as well use some Onion services, DuckDuckGo has one. Let's see if we can find the EG GitHub. And wouldn't you know it, we can, but my golly is it slow. So anyways, yeah, that's the Scepter desktop. Now let's talk about the distro delves tests. 
If you wanted to use Scepter to listen to some audio stuff or watch some videos, could you do it out of the box? And somewhat unsurprising, yeah, everything seemed to work. All of the archive formats worked, all of the audio formats worked, and only one video format didn't work, and that was MPEG-2. And also, since Scepter is using KDE and KDE uses GwynView as the photo viewer, it can open pretty much all of the photo formats I have. The only one that it couldn't was HEIC, and GIMP handled that just fine. In the way of network, nothing worked, but I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. It did have printer support, which struck me as really strange, considering CentOS-based distros don't even ship with printer support. And if you have a privacy-focused distro, the last thing you want to be doing is reaching out and trying to find printers on your network. So that is a very strange default. So the very last thing we'll do on the episode is take a look at how Scepter handles gaming. It didn't have Flatpak or Snap, so I had to rely on the default repos, and Debian's repos really aren't that bad. I got my hands on Doom, or PR Boom, which is a Doom engine, and I'm using the shareware version of Doom, so that's just Doom 1. And honestly, it ran really well, but this engine is like really janky. The default control scheme is like a weird mix between WASD and the arrow keys, and shift control and alt, and it just wasn't good. And the mouse sensitivity was completely out of control and not usable. That could have been my VM though. But either way, I eventually changed the control scheme and I just kind of played the game and it ran fine. Amazingly, it ran better on Scepter than it did on Alma Linux if you watched the previous episode. Now granted, that was free Doom and this is Doom shareware on PB Boom. So different engines entirely, it could be that. But either way, you could game on this if you really, really wanted to. So yeah, Scepter, Scepter Linux. I don't really know what to think of it. This is another one of those things where I'm not terribly interested in privacy-focused distros. I mean, they're cool, and I totally understand why you would use them and who would use them, you know, for press and privacy purposes, but I don't really know much about them, and I don't know if there's a lot of room for a lot of different privacy-focused distros. I mean, all this one really offers from Tails is a KDE desktop. If you're looking for a privacy-focused distro that runs well in a live session and uses KDE, then Scepter is the way to go. But if you want something just traditional that lots of people use and it's been around for a long time, you'd use something like Tails. And there are other privacy-focused distros out there like Cubes or CubeOS. I know that people have requested me to look at that one. But that's going to wrap this one up, folks. I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for requesting this video. I probably wouldn't have looked at it had somebody not requested it, so if there's something you want me to look at, be sure to hop on over to the GitHub and there is a chance that I will choose your submission for the next video. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.